Hey everyone, in this video I want to show you the very basics how you can create your own multilingual website. So without further ado, let's get started. When we are in our WP Admin dashboard, what you want to do is head over to plugins and let's add a new plugin. Let's go over here into the search box and type holy lang and then you want to install this one with a little parrot. And one more thing before we continue, if you are using Elementor web page builder, you would want to also install that one. And this plugin we will visit in the near future. Great. So let's head over and activate the Polylink plugin and then we'll go back to this one. When you activate it, make sure that you will set up your main website language. For example, for my language, it will be English. So let's head over here. You have a ton of languages so you can scroll down and find your own. So let's head over here and find the English by English US. And if you have other languages, add new language and then search for your own. I'll search for another language and let's say it's gonna be French. Let's find French over here. Cool, and let's continue. Good, so now you see I haven't added it. So what you wanna do now is yes, add this language to continue the next step. Yes, add it, and now we have two languages, English and French. Good, so now we're gonna to continue to the next one and allow polling to translate media. So this one applies, for example, if you have an image and it has the title, the alt text, or the description of the image would be also translated. So if you want to, you can enable it. So I'm gonna hit continue. And then for the content here, you're going to assign the main language. For my example, it will be English, let's hit continue. And then for the home page, it will be also English. And one more thing to notice is that you would be able to see your main website language by this little black star. And all the other languages will be underneath it without the black star. So let's hit continue and then we are ready to go forward. So let's return to the dashboard. Let's head over to our plugins and activate the Polylink Elementor plugin, which enables us to translate those pages and work with Elementor. So let's activate it. And now let's head over back to pages. And as we can see right now, we can see our two flags. We have our English or US and French. As you might be able to see here that we have our both home pages, one in English and the second one in French. And now also one thing that you can also see is that we have our little pencil. That means that this web page is created in the other language, but we also been able to edit it. For example, if we head over to the English one and we want to edit the French one, you can see when we hover it, we have a little tooltip that tells us this is a homepage for French. So now we have both of these ones. One more thing to notice is you have the little Elementor icon that signifies that this web page is created by Elementor. So for example, let's head over and edit this web page with Elementor, the homepage. And when we open it, you can see that the web page is used usually as it is in Elementor. Now, one more thing to notice is when we go back into our menu and we try to exit the web page, you can also see the languages over here. So you can also switch between them. So for example, if I hit the home page by friends, you can see that it now preloads the page or the home page in French. So now I can hit edit with Elementor and it will load the Elementor web page builder. So now we can also copy our design from the previous home page from the English version. So for that example, let me do it just now really quick. So now that I copy and paste it from the original home page and the English version, as you might see here, also you can see that it's still in English. So you need to go and edit this text also widget by widget. So after you pre-filled all the widgets, hit update so your changes will be applied. So when you're done, also hit exit the page so we can exit from it. And one more thing to see is when we want to add those little flags so we can switch between those languages, what you wanna do is head over to templates and head over to all so you can see your header. If you don't see your header, what I mostly suggest is go to headers and right over here you will see our main header and we can see it's on our entire website. So you can go head over and edit with Elementor. Once it's loaded, what you wanna do is head over to your header and right over here here we have our new widget by Polylang that integrates with Elementor, that language switcher. So you can drag and drop it right over here, right next to it. You can see here that we have our flags. If we go over here into the navigator and put it just below the website header or to the WordPress menu. And right over here, let's head over to our widget and let's customize it. So for that example, you can choose it to be only with flags or only with French or only to display the language codes. For example, you want it to be French, so it will be like cut it a little bit and you can just disable this or just disable totally the flags 
Otherwise, then leave only the English and French. And you can also customize it as any other widget in WordPress or in Elementor. I usually like the flags. I think it looks a little bit more neat to my preferences. So I'm just going to disable all the other ones and just display those little flags and hit update. So when I go over to our homepage and when we are over here, refresh it and now we'll be able to see our little flags. Let's see or let's check it when we want to see our French version of the website. Right now it's in the English version. So let's head over to the French one and we can see that in our URL, we can see our little French and home front. One thing that you can do to change it is when we head over to our dashboard and we head over to our polling settings right over here, languages, and let's see our settings. In the settings, there are a few things that you can modify. For example, the URL modifications. Let's head over and change them. So when we click on it, there are a few options that we can choose from. So the language is set from the directory name in a pretty permalink. So you would see it this way. So the language would be here. And the other option is this one, which we have in English, it would look like little or subdomain, for example, if for those who knows what I'm talking about. So the subdomain is basically for in a short what it is, it's basically one thing that goes under your website. Website. It's kind of a website that goes under the main website, but it's not this for that example. So let's head over to the the other option that we were on. One more option that you can see here is to hide the URL language information for the default language, which is pretty nice. And that would look like this. Uh, you can also have the option to show the language, which uh, I don't think it's so pretty as it looks like it. So let's skip it this one and let's save changes. So one more other thing that we can do is to detect the browser language, which is to your own preferences. If you want to, for example, if someone accessing the uh, website from France, for example, so you can activate it and it will automatically switch to that language as you can see here when the font page is visited redirects to itself in the browser preferred language as this doesn't work if it is cached polling will attempt to disable the front page cache for known cache plugins one more option that you have here is the media as I said before you can also translate the media for example if it would be a title it would be a description it would be an alt description for that media you can do that too I don't see it necessary for me so I'll just keep it disabled or as it is one more thing that you can do is to custom post type and taxonomies and edit it. So let's hover to the settings of it. And we can see here that we can also translate the post types or taxonomies. For example, I have product categories or product tags or product shipping classes or products. So those things, if you need to check them and save changes. One more thing is to synchronize things. So this would be very important. For example, if you need to synchronize between different things or different taxonomies, custom fields or whatever. So I'll be enabling those. So if I need to translate them, there will be a synchronization between the languages. I think it's very handy. And also let's head over and save those changes. We're done with this. So let's head over to our languages and let's see our translations. Right over here in this page, what you can see is the ability to translate, for example, to the language that you choose to. If you have it in English, most of the website or WordPress would be in English. So you can also translate those fields over here as you can see in the translations. And then you see the first one will be English and the other one is French or language that you choose. Head over and translate those. As you might see, there are only 10 items, so that could also cause some problems. And for that matter, I usually use the local plugin that will be able to translate different little aspects of the theme or plugin or whatever I'm using to create my WooCommerce store, my website if I need to. So let's head over to our local translate and all right over here, we can see all of our uh, plugins, themes or whatever you have installed on your WordPress website. What I've seen from a lot of cases that when you go to your WooCommerce, plugin and you want to translate it most of the cases it's already been translated if it's whether it's in Russian Hebrew uh, French English or whatever so let's head back and right over here I'm usually using the hello Lamentor, which is works perfectly with this and as we can see here we have also Hebrew and Russian for that example and let's head over to our new language and now it will prompt us to create a new template so let's head over and create a new template right over here we can create a new template and now we can set a new language so WordPress language for our example, we have French. Let's head over here and I'm usually setting it to custom. As you might have noticed, what I've seen is that it's mostly used that way, not by system or by author, and it saves the changes locally on the database or in the plugin folder. So let's start translating. And now we'll be seeing the scene where we can translate or we can search for the English version of the string that we want to translate to. And then for example, let's see login or just 
us log or logo. We can see our site logo or logo with. All right, I think you get the hang of it, but sometimes even though I'm want to trust some plugins on my website, such as WooCommerce, and I'm trying to forcefully translate something in that language, and sometimes it just doesn't work. Let's say, for example, I go over here and I tap login and I'm trying to translate it and it doesn't matter if I'm translating it to French and then I hit save and then I hit sync. It doesn't translate it at all. So one more thing that I want to introduce you to is the following plugin. So let's head over to plugins and let's add new and let's head over to our search box and type again, holy link. And it will be this plugin theme and plugin translation for polylang. So let's install it. So after we have installed this plugin, let's activate it. And once we have activated, we'll be prompted or we'll be redirected to our plugins page. And right over here, when we scroll down to our languages, now we're going to have a new item, which is TTFP settings. Head over to this setting. And right over here, you would want to choose your own plugin. For that example, I would go to WooCommerce and then I can choose if I want to translate the theme that I'm on. So I'll also check this box and translate admin dashboard to default polling language. Yeah, I can check that too. And right over here, if you want to, there is a new tool. If you want me to check it and do a tutorial on it on the matter, you can also comment it down below and I'll be happy to do that. And right after you finish what you want to translate or whatever plugin or thing that you want to translate, just hit save. And the next thing that you want to do is head over to our languages and let's head over to translations. You remember that we had 10 items. Now we're going to have 15,000 392 items. What that does, it basically takes all the strings from the theme from this exact plugin and just takes it and enables you to translate it as you might see here. You can see group, we have it by WordPress and we have TTFP WordPress admin and so forth. So let's head over, for example, to page 100. And now we have, again, we have WordPress admin, we have WordPress core and so forth. So, and that thing would be able to help you to translate different aspects of your WordPress website if you need to, because I've seen a lot of cases where I'm trying to translate something and it doesn't act like it should be if you're using a local translation. Translation. One more thing that you can do, and the last thing that I want to show you is to head over to pages and right over here, when you want to add a new page in your new language of your website, just head over to the page, for example, the basic form. I want to add a French language. You can head over to the plus sign over here and click it, or just head over to the page and click edit. And right in the edit page, right over here, head over to the languages and just choose the name of that page in French or your language for that matter. So let's head over, enter our basic form French and let's hit plus. And right over here, we have the basic form, which now you would see that little sign of the pencil. And now we are in the French version of it. And now we can add our new title and obviously add it with Elementor. I'll also show you that it also copied the style and elements from the English version in just a minute. So let's head over and type um, basic form French and good. So let's publish it and let's edit it with Elementor. As you might see here, or if you've missed the tutorial with the form that I've made with the custom HTML or JavaScript, you'll be able to see it either in the right or left hand corner of the video. And right over here, you can see that it totally copied that style or those elements as it is just made it French page for me to edit. And once you're done with your edits, head over to the little three horizontal lines or right over here and click on the exit it button. And that basically concludes the creation of the multilingual website. As you might see, you can dive deeply into building your own website in all those languages. But I think you get the point where you set the language, the main language, and then you head over to those pages and then you edit them or you create them with a little plus sign and then you create them and edit them as you wish to. So if you have any more questions, I'll be really happy to answer that down in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos on WooCommerce, Elementor or WordPress, feel free to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any video that I post. I'll be seeing you in the next one.